You're listening to Three Kitchens Podcast, a member of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. And now, time to find out what's cooking today. This episode of Three Kitchens Podcast is brought to you by Alberta Blue Cross. Even if you're a busy business owner with more meetings than hours in a day, you are calm and collected when your group benefit plan is taken care of by Alberta Blue Cross. Your employees can manage their own health, dental, life, and disability coverage online anytime on any device, making it easier for them and for you. To learn more and explore your options, head to av.bluecross.ca. Welcome to Three Kitchens. I'm Heather. I'm here with my lovely co-hosts, Sarah and Erin. Hello. 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 Hi. Hello. (laughs) What's happening? Here we are again. Yeah, and it's another Friday afternoon. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. I don't even have a drink. I should have poured myself something. What is happening? If I I start talking too fast, let me know, because I just guzzled my tea, so I'm probably a little bit faster than I should be. (laughs) Oh, Oh my gosh. It it sounded like that was fast forwarded. (laughs) It's the only thing that's going to get me through. Oh, I thought you were going to say through my episode. You need something to get you through. I'm just... I don't know. Fridays are not my good day. Like, I just want to go to bed early. I don't want to, you know, people are like, thank God it's Friday. I'm like, thank God it's bedtime. See ya. Oh, I am so the opposite. (laughs) Friday, I wake up. I am awake. I am ready. Sometimes I do have a couch nap, but I am ready for the night. Like, it's my party night. Hmm. Come with you, Aaron. Last night, while I was trying to bake some muffins for my kids, I thought I would get ahead of everything by doing a double batch, get ready for the weekend. I wasn't really thinking when I converted the recipe into a muffin recipe that the temperature in the oven shouldn't be changed. So the muffins were cooked wonderfully, except for the bottoms, which were solid burnt discs. (laughs) (laughs) So then I was like, well, I can just cut this off and the rest of the muffin is fine. Well, while I'm cutting off the rest of that muffin, I go and I burn the dinner that I'm making for us because it was an all-star dinner night. We were having soup and grilled cheese. (laughs) I go and burn the freaking, I just, it was hilarious. Like we just couldn't stop laughing about the failures. And it made me think. (laughs) But it made me think of this scientist in the 1800s who had a lot of failures. Well, maybe not failures. He contributed in his ways, but he had some obstacles in front of him. Right. So have you ever heard of Alfred Russell Wallace? Don't know. No. No? All right. Maybe when we hear of his epic failures, that will Mm, trigger a memory. Maybe they're not epic failures. They're just, well, they're kind of epic. (laughs) Okay. So he was... um, As a young person, he became a lawyer. It wasn't really his path in life. So he teamed up with a friend and they decided that they were going to be naturalists um, in the mid-1800s when there was a really big boom for exotic plants Mm -hmm. and for finding Mm -hmm. new things in the new world. And then they put them in their sort of greenhouse. What did they call those things? In their conservatory. So they liked to get all these plants from all over the place and there was good money in doing that. So sorry, they would collect these plants and then sell them? to people yes okay so they would go over to quote unquote the new world right collect these plants and specimens as naturalists right and then they would bring them home and people would pay a lot of money for their specimens right and they would give them to like natural history museums and write papers and you know there was always some science involved but right i get the sense from these stories that sometimes people did it because they wanted to make cash Right. Everyone has their own motivators, whether right. they're obvious about it or not. So they went over to Brazil with this plan of collecting specimens together. Mm-hmm. And so they hike up into the Amazonian rainforest. And after about a week, they decide to split ways. I don't think there's much as to why they really okay. split ways. But it, it sounds to me that one of them wanted to make money. And one of them wanted to research. And because those two things conflicted with each other, right off on their separate ways they went so like physically they went off on different trails or physically something? they went <laughs> okay. different ways okay so old wallace here mm-hmm. he goes off into the rainforest he spends four years collecting specimens 
and bringing and loading them all back onto his boat yeah. to sail them all back right. to Britain and get a whole bunch of money because he's got right. all these promise contracts and he's look right. at what I've got and mm -hmm. you know he sent correspondence saying I've got these thousands of different new things so he sets sail from Brazil and 25 days oh, into no. their cross Atlantic trip the boat burns down and they are ah. marooned in the middle of the ocean all <laughs> of his samples and specimens gone no so he gets rescued by another ship they go back to uh, he goes back home and he is living off of loans and stuff because he's not been able to pay his debts oh, right. <laughs> for the funding of his expedition. So his other friend, by the way, spends 11 years mm. in the Amazon rainforest collecting, doing the science. Mm. And he sends them back on four or five different boats after learning from his friends. Smart. Folly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So he, he got off a little bit better with bringing things back. Mm -hmm. So the lesson of the story is don't put all your eggs in one basket. <laughs> <laughs> he had some bad luck, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, let's just hope this recipe is not a failure. I, yeah, I hope you haven't just somehow like cursed Jinx. me or something. <laughs> no, it's okay. I burnt everything in my house yesterday so that you'll be oh, right. fine. Right, right. I'll be fine. Right. Bad luck's gone. I have absorbed all the bad mojos so that you may continue Good. on in your successful way. Okay, well, let's talk about some food, shall we? It is um, June now, as we record, it is. And um, I'm going to get the trailer out of storage next week. And we're going for our first camping trip of the season. Our fancy camping, listeners. Which, fancy. Hey, it's still camping in a trailer. Okay? <laughs> we're just... I'm They're journeying to the Amazon. One of them's there for adventure. One of them's there for a good time. Yeah. <laughs> they split that, ways. That actually split does ways. sort of describe us, doesn't it? <laughs> except for the splitting of ways. But... <laughs> except for you're trapped in one trailer. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the one going to have a good time. If anybody's wondering which of us is which, <laughs> if that's not clear. Uh, okay. <laughs> my husband will be looking for adventure. I will want to put my feet up and eat. Yes. And one of the things I'm going to eat mm -hmm. is classic camping treat s'mores. Mm. Anybody who doesn't know what a s'more is, that means some more because you want to eat some more of it and it is a toasted marshmallow and chocolate between two graham crackers and it's a gooey squishy melty little messy yummy thing <laughs> i don't know how else do you want to describe it it's a diabetes yeah. sandwich <laughs> yeah it's, it's delicious <laughs> and it's a camping essential almost and but people get so caught up in that you got to use the Hershey's chocolate and not anything else or you know no 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 very, no no what chocolate is it yeah no I don't oh uh, what do I'm you just, use I'm just arguing with you for the sake oh. of arguing because you said people get caught up in it so people, oh, they, some they, people are very opinionated yeah. some people put it all together wrap it in foil put it that's in the that's what coals. I do mm -hmm. yeah but I think you have a real danger of burning your cracker mm -hmm. mm. if you do it that way sometimes the cracker is too close to the heat and it burns right if you do it right the chocolate melts nicely when yeah. you do it yeah. that way so there are different ways you can do it yeah for sure different techniques that's right so one of the ways that i i'm i like to try to simplify it personally like if you get a chocolate covered digestive cookie oh yeah mm -hmm. and then the chocolate is already on In the there. cookie and then you just eat it like that, as opposed to putting a piece of chocolate that you have to then hope will melt. Right. Yeah. Um, or it slips off while you're biting into it because yeah. everything's kind of gooey and... They are messy. Yeah. Perfecting the s'more, I would say. You can <laughs> eat a lot of chocolate, marshmallows, and graham crackers that aren't... That is just like... That don't have the same satisfaction as yeah, a yeah. good yeah. s'more. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. But you still eat it because... <laughs> Because oh, well. you still eat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. So my plan for this is to make homemade marshmallows, which mm -hmm. you guys remember I have made before. I made them yes. at Christmas time and we put them in hot chocolate and yes. they were really good. Yes. Like, yeah. And so I was thinking if I'm going to make marshmallows, I'm going to make s'mores. And then what do I want to do for the rest of it? And I thought you can make graham crackers, but I don't want to. <laughs> I think right. they might turn out to be 
sometimes when something's homemade, it becomes like a healthy, in quotation marks, right. version of something. Mm. And it's not the same sugary processed thing that it actually tastes better <laughs> in this right. case. Okay, so I found a recipe. Let me just go with the cookies. So it's a chocolate chip graham cracker cookie, homemade. Okay. It's a chocolate chip cookie, but that also has graham cracker crumb in it. Okay. And I'm thinking it won't be exactly a traditional classic s'more, but if you have two of these cookies with a homemade toasted marshmallow in between, I'm thinking that might be pretty good, even of though it's not it exactly be. traditional. Yeah. Right? Uh, it's got all the elements. Yeah, of course Ex- it will yeah, be. Yeah, exactly. And I'm going to have to look, I don't think just regular old chocolate chips. I think it needs to be like chocolate mm. chunks, chunks or something because yeah. oh, you need that chocolate in there, right? Gooeyness. Yes. Yeah. And you want it to melt a little bit, which is sometimes the problem with the big old square of chocolate. Mm -hmm. So this is my plan. Let me tell you about homemade marshmallows. If you've never made these before, they're actually really easy. You're making a gelatin. That's what makes it squishy, right? You've got like a gelatin powder with water and it kind of activates and makes this kind of gooey stuff. Okay. Okay. And then you have water, corn syrup, and sugar that you bring to a boil. Mm. And if you use your candy thermometer, you measure it. um, I forget what the temperature is exactly, but on your thermometer, it will say hard, Mm. which is what, like if you were making like a toffee or something. Okay. So it's like a big boil, like you're really boiling it for maybe like a minute. Then you pour that hot sugar mixture into the gelatin mixture and you beat it with your mixer I wouldn't recommend doing it by hand. I think it'd be difficult to keep that up because it's like 12 or 15 minutes it takes to... Child's play. Oh, easy peasy. Child's play, I tell you, Heather. Unless you're Aaron. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, no. I still haven't recovered from that. Yeah. It's kind of like making meringue. If you've ever made that like um, Italian method and it forms stiff, it looks like a meringue, except it's not because there's no egg whites in there, but it looks similar, right? Right. Right. Okay, cool. And then you pour that into a, like a baking pan Mm -hmm. that you've lined with um, parchment. And then you put like plastic wrap over the top of it and seal it in. And then you let it sit four hours or overnight. It has to rest. And that's how it kind of goes from being a pourable thing to a spongy. Solid. You have to make the jelly set. Yeah. And then when you cut it um, and toss it in cornstarch and icing sugar. Because you know how they're like dry to the touch on the outside? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they'd be very gooey if you didn't toss them in the icing sugar and a little bit of cornstarch. That's it. When it's in the mixer, you can add different flavors in there if you want to make it vanilla, like kind of traditional vanilla or... What did I do at Christmas? I think I made like a a puree, like a fruit puree and mix that in there. You can make chocolate marshmallows. You can make. Yeah. So these are relatively easy things to make. I'm just hoping that the end result, when you toast the marshmallow and put it between those cookies, that it's going to be enough like a s'more that it's a hit. And not uh-huh. like, oh, mm, well, it's kind of like a s'more, but not I'm enough. I'm curious you know what I mean? how those marshmallows will hold up over a fire. Uh-huh. I know you did make these at Christmas. That being six months past, I have a hard time remembering what was the texture really oh, like. It was like a cloud. I do remember it very well. But could you put that on a stick and roast it without it like melting? I guess, you know what I, I mean? So. Like, I'm very curious as uh-huh. to how I mean, it, it is will sugar. react in... I am also curious because we did not try toasting them. Yeah. But I will say when we put it in hot chocolate, it did not immediately like dissolve. Oh, that's oh, right, true. Right. It's it took its time melting, right? So yeah. I don't think it'll completely just go <laughs> off your stick. Like right. it might be faster. It might toast more quickly because mm-hmm. it's soft. Mm. I don't know. Should you make it earlier so it has a bit longer to dry? That's probably a good idea. Or make more of it so we can experiment with it. <laughs> <laughs> She's just going to make us a tray each yeah. before she goes camping. Thank you, Heather. <laughs> we'll have to see about that. So let me see. I, I don't know exactly which recipe, but um, I'm just looking at this one. It says it makes 30 marshmallows. Oh, wow. We'll take I think 10, that'll be enough. 10 each. Okay, so I'm what just... I'll do is give you marshmallows and cookies, and it will be up to you to figure out how to toast it and put it together yeah. because I'll be off camping. <laughs> Maybe I'll put some in a banana boat. What's a banana What's boat? A banana what? Boat? You haven't never eaten a banana boat? What's happening? <laughs> What's happening? What's that? What is What's this happening right now? <laughs> 
take your banana yeah. in the shape of a boat. So the curve up, Yeah. Uh-huh. stick a knife in it and slice it halfway through, not all the way through the banana, just okay. through the hole lengthwise. Yeah. Open it up just enough to stick mini marshmallows and chocolate chips in there. Wrap it in foil. Put it on your barbecue or in near the coals. When you open it up, you use a spoon and you scoop out all that nice, soft, caramelized sort of banana with the chocolate and the marshmallow. Yeah. You've never eaten this. No. Gosh, well, you never ta- told us anything about it. Why was it up to me? <laughs> Because you knew about it. How many times have we camped together and I've never seen a banana boat? You know what? I haven't made one in probably. <laughs> she probably made it and didn't invite us. That was the night she was like, I'm just going to yeah. tuck in early. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just open it by myself. Where's mom? Behind I'll my be right there, boys. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> too funny we used to make these when i was a kid my mom used to make them and one time my friend isabel and i were camping as adults but we were out camping <laughs> and we went to bc we went on like a road trip you know when you're young and don't have kids and you can do those things <sighs> and we and it was no peach, i don't remember it was peach season mm-hmm. and we bought these beautiful peaches at like the farmer's market or the roadside stand or whatever and we did the same thing where we cut it in half and take out the pit and put the marshmallow and the chocolate it in there and close it back up yeah kind of scoop some out in the middle close it back up and then it was this soft gooey baked peach with baked peach that would be yes. so good now i want that oh my god i think it's like peach season <laughs> i'll try to make enough marshmallow that you can experiment a few things with it and let us know what to do with the, the homemade marshmallow aside from just eating them because they're pretty darn good little treat this episode of three kitchens podcast is brought to you by taproot spotlight a service that helps businesses and organizations pay attention to the people they serve. Taproot tells you the news about the people and companies that are important to you. Use that information internally to keep everyone on the same page. Or share it with the world in your newsletter, on your website, and on your social media channels. Paying attention pays dividends. Find out more at taprootpublishing.ca slash spotlight. That's taprootpublishing.ca slash spotlight. Okay, let's talk about how these marshmallows and cookies turned into s'mores or didn't. (laughs) Are we wanting some more? (laughs) Some more. Do we want some more of either of these things that I made for you or do we not? I I do. You do? I I do too. Okay. (laughs) All right. Well, that's a good start. Let's, I'm actually going to get these cookies out of the way first. Okay. Let's unpack this. (laughs) <laughs> so these were um, a graham cracker cookie. And I, you know, I thought, keep, let's keep these more simple. Let's make the cookies in advance. We're just toasting a marshmallow, putting it between cookies. And when I came across a graham cracker cookie, I thought, perfect. Because mm-hmm. it'll have that flavor of graham crackers. This is from a site called bunsinmyoven.com. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> How many buns? My oh goodness. Boy. I don't know. Plural. I guess you're not talking if you're not talking about babies, if you're actually talking about like dinner rolls, then you could have quite a few. <laughs> I hope they're talking about dinner rolls. <laughs> <laughs> so this recipe includes it's I mean, it's a basic chocolate chip cookie, but it has only three quarter cup of flour. And okay. one and a half cups of graham cracker crumbs. So that's your difference. Oh, okay. So easy enough to mix together. It's your basic cookie. What happened when I baked them is they just went flat, which I have found in the past sometimes happens if your butter is too soft or there's too much butter, maybe. Mm-hmm. I don't know mm-hmm. about you guys, but it didn't really. It had half a cup of butter, which didn't seem outrageous. It doesn't um, seem outrageous. And so after the first tray basically was like one big blob on the cookie sheet. Oh my put, goodness. Then I put the dough into the fridge and I thought maybe if I cool it first, it'll hold together right. better. It didn't really seem to help a whole lot. I did get individual cookies, but they were still flat little crispy pancake kind of <laughs> things. I don't know why. I honestly, I don't, I wouldn't make this recipe again just because... I didn't get the result I wanted from it. Mm-hmm. Sure didn't look like the picture <laughs> in uh, bunsinmyoven.com. But I have to say, I thought they tasted good with mm-hmm. the graham crackers. What did you guys think of these cookies? Let's yeah. just go. They, they really tasted good. It tasted like a cookie, but 
it was hard because the way I make s'mores is I put them in the foil and put them on my barbecue and right. they didn't stay together. Like they, mm. they were crumbly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they were very tasty. Yeah. yeah. I think they tasted super good. I also, <laughs> I did a modified s'more, I'm going to call it. I put the cookie in my toaster oven and the marshmallow on top. Oh, yeah. and then toasted it and it mm. made the marshmallow like the perfect like the marshmallow puffed up and cooked a little bit the chocolate and the cookie melted it oh. made a fantastic s'more but um when I went to pick it out of my toaster oven because I didn't think to put it on a tray or a pan oh. it was like crumble crunch blah, 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 blah. yeah the cookies didn't hold up the messy it was a yeah. deconstructed s'more yeah yeah <laughs> it was a tasty <laughs> deconstructed s'more yeah i would guess that it needed more flour yeah like three I quarters agree. of a cup of flour doesn't seem like a lot of flour in a cookie mm -hmm. and the flour is the glue that's got to mix with the butter mm -hmm. to like make that chewiness right but then if you over flour then it becomes crumbly i don't know i would yeah i would want to play around with that recipe and the ratios and and see if there's something different because i thought the flavor was really good like i loved the graham cracker in there yeah me too mm -hmm. okay and my family really loved the taste of these cookies and mm, because yes. i gave i tried to give you guys the ones that actually held together <laughs> And I had all these little bits of cookies because they didn't hold up. And so my family was eating little cookie bits mm -hmm. and they really liked the taste of them. So did my family. Didn't quite hold up and I wasn't really that happy with them. Yeah, it's it's too bad the cookie crumbled. <laughs> the cookie crumbled. <laughs> That's the way the cookie crumbles, you guys. So the question, the question we had at the beginning was, could a homemade marshmallow hold up to being toasted for a s'more? Yeah. And I would say the question is still a little bit debatable. Oh. <laughs> oh. Because as you said, Aaron, it puffed up nicely when it was heated. It, the problem was keeping it on a stick. Ah. Uh, so if, when you actually put it over a fire, it's oh. way too soft. Yeah. Oh, which cool. is why I liked it. It okay. gets warm and it starts melting off the stick and it's like, ah, hurry, get the cookies. Okay. Like, okay. Oh, so dang. it didn't work super well for the traditional way of like toasting a marshmallow over a fire. Right. But it worked great for putting it in a foil and putting that on the barbecue. It was better than a regular marshmallow because it melt got melty and, mm -hmm. but it was still soft and I don't know, it just reminds me of a cloud. Yeah. That's the thing about a homemade marshmallow is much softer typically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Although I also made you those little bitty ones. Uh, yeah. And those, let's talk about those real quick because we didn't really include them in the, they're mm -hmm. not really part of the s'mores. I just wanted to try it out. And that was made with maple syrup. Was that the flavor in it? Yeah. I did not know what the flavor was. I thought they were coffee. Oh, interesting. Oh, I seriously missed the boat on that flavor 100%. Did you put them <laughs> in your coffee and then have it and then went, oh, they taste that like coffee? might not have been a bad thing. Um, I just, yeah, no, now I, I want to put them in my coffee. I, I didn't. I ate one and I was like, oh, she put like espresso or something in here. It's like mm. a coffee flavored marshmallow. That is, wow, <laughs> flew right past me maple all right yeah so what <laughs> that is made of <laughs> what site is this from oh this is the view from great island.com a third a cup of cold water powdered gelatin a cup of maple syrup and a pinch of salt mm. that's all that is it's like using yeast you put your gelatin on water you let it sit and kind of do its little thing and then you put maple syrup in a pan and heat it up until it sort of foams. Okay. Let it boil a bit. You boil the syrup or medium heat until you get to 235 Fahrenheit on a candy thermometer. Okay, you're going to put the mixer on with the gelatin. You're going to kind of slowly pour the syrup down the side of your bowl into your gelatin mm -hmm. um, right. until it creates peaks, kind of like meringue, right. but it's pourable. You want to be able to kind of pour it into your pan and then you let it um, sit. This was super sticky like that's why it ended up being those little bitty ones because i had such trouble getting it off of the parchment that was lining my pan oh no that, way and when i've made marshmallows before they just it came off so easily and it cut up and it was great this was like what is wrong with these marshmallows they were so <laughs> sticky i think maple syrup is just it's different different yeah. sugar 
Exactly. Were the uh, ratios of gelatin to water different from the other one? Because they were much firmer. Did you notice? I yeah. think they it had to do, dense, honestly, it had to do with the um, syrup. Syrup, okay. Yeah, maple syrup, I find when I use it in baking, acts a little bit differently. Oh, okay. Oops. Oh. And I, I don't know why. <laughs> it's obviously different sugar. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's more, uh, I'd say, like stiff or something. Right. Like, Especially it when it cools a bit down. better. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it mm. sets um, harder, I would right. say. Right. And it didn't, you could see it in that little marshmallow. You could see the dark kind of ribbon of syrup, whereas the other one was just white, right? Mm. So let's talk about the, about the cloud Okay, the cloud the, marshmallow. I want to hear about the fluffy marshmallow. Which is like a regular, it's very basic marshmallow recipe. If you look up marshmallow recipes, this is typically what you find. And this one is from averycooks.com. Um, so again, it's a cup of cold water, gelatin, um, which is three packets, those little okay, packets yeah. you buy, uh, which is the same ratio, I believe, as the other recipe. Then this one has granulated sugar and light corn syrup so this Uh is the difference you're doing syrup and sugar the other one was just maple syrup right yeah Mm. um and then vanilla extract or you could put in whatever flavor you want yeah you could put in almond extract you Mm -hmm. could do orange you could do whatever you like so i just did the vanilla and you make it the exact same way as i described before except when you heat up your corn syrup you also put in sugar your sugar Mm -hmm. with it and water until it becomes uh like a clear syrup and you're doing the same thing you're whisking it i would recommend using a mixer i wouldn't Mm -hmm. attempt to whisk this by hand and pour that hot syrup and the whole like that would be Aaron. did you hear that did you hear that Aaron? (laughs) She does not recommend doing it by hand. <laughs> <laughs> hey, now, put down that middle finger, lady. <laughs> Rude gestures may have been added here. <laughs> yes, I've learned my whisking mistakes, mm-hmm. okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, also, the other thing I didn't mention before is that when you prep your pan, mm-hmm. put your parchment and then um, use a sifter and sift icing sugar Uh, over the whole thing and you can even put a bit of cornstarch like just like a tablespoon or something of cornstarch in there too because that helps kind of keep things from sticking right once it's in the pan cover it with plastic and let it sit like till tomorrow like Mm -hmm. eight hours even more maybe because it needs time to firm up like not in the fridge on the counter okay just on the counter yeah and then when it's set you can basically just kind of like take that out and and cut it, but make sure you're dusting everything. All the you end up with icing sugar all over your <laughs> counter and all over everything. Mm-hmm. Because and I had my little flour sifter, oh, you know, right. little, yeah. little thing, and I just kept on on your knife, on your marshmallows, yeah. on everything, uh, okay, just continually so that it's not because otherwise your knife sticks to it. Right. And once you've cut it, the edges are sticky. <laughs> everything yeah. is like you've lo- you've cut it up, you've lo- kind of loosened them into little marshmallows mm-hmm. and you've dusted everything let them sit until when you pick them up you can handle it without it sticking to you right okay then you can like throw them in a bag and just remember to keep lots of sugar like dust with sugar right right, right. they are not dry on the outside the same way a what do you call it, store-bought marshmallow is dry mm-hmm. so you have you have to just keep them coated with sugar i yeah. guess to keep them from sticking and um this recipe you end up with like it says 28 large marshmallows. I don't think I had that quite that many marshmallows, but um, quite a few, I nice. guess. This is what I used to make the s'more. The one that I was actually able to get off the paper and cut bigger. Yeah, I, I liked it. I definitely <laughs> love these more than the store-bought ones. And I think that they are great for s'mores the way I make s'mores. Mm-hmm. Maybe not on a stick. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just too soft. <laughs> but that we- softness was what I loved about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. That's what makes them fresh and Mm -hmm. tasty, right? Yeah, I would say that they made a far superior s'more in terms of the texture of your marshmallow when it when it got heated. But it's unfortunate that they don't hold up over the fire. But yeah, it's just a bit too soft for that. So the marshmallows definitely tick, 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 tick. I think everyone should try it. Maybe the cookie, even though it's tasty, might not be the best one for a s'more. Yeah. 
I agree. And in fact, it, unless you can change that flour to graham cracker crumb ratio, I wouldn't even make it as a cookie because it was so crumbly and just fell mm-hmm. apart. Mm-hmm. I'm just picturing yeah. one of those, you know, those really fancy restaurants where they take something and then they change the concept of it. Yeah. And you bring that beautiful marshmallow onto the dining table and take out that blowtorch and you torch it up. And then you take those cookie crumbles and you put it over it. See, that would work. some chocolate shavings or something. Yeah, maybe at Erin's restaurant. Yeah. Okay. Um, Heather will be in charge of the deconstructed s'more (laughs) dessert. I was just going to hand the recipe off. Why do I have to be in charge of it? Oh, I don't know. Why do I have to open a restaurant? (laughs) (laughs) Because Sarah said so. Because Sarah said so. From my living room. All right. I'll do it. (laughs) From the comfort of my house. Go work. (laughs) All right. Well, not my favorite recipes that I've ever done for three kitchens, but... um, Marshmallows were a winner. I think this is sort of what happens. Like, I had thought, oh, I just made this fried chicken. I just made pita bread. I was like challenging myself and I wanted to do something simpler. And I thought, oh, this will be an easy win. Well, there, (laughs) that's what I get for being cocky. (laughs) (laughs) The universe was telling me, check yourself, lady. Hmm. (laughs) (laughs) No easy times for you. No. And as we've said before, it's okay to fail. Can just make it more fun to talk about. And I do think, I think those little maple marshmallows would be great in the banana boat that I talked about but I didn't make banana boats I actually completely forgot about the idea of when I was camping Mm. Um, but I may do that at some point but you know what I think after what Erin said I want to put them in my coffee (laughs) yeah well why 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 don't we have coffee with marshmallows have you done that before no no this sounds sounds good yeah. You know what would be good is a whiskey marshmallow. Yeah. Oh, dang, Heather. <laughs> in your Because I like whiskey in my coffee, actually. Or a Bailey's marshmallow oh, in yeah. your coffee. Mm. Oh, Kahlua? What's happening? Ooh. Yeah. I feel like for Christmas time, we need All right. a cinnamon, need a cinnamon marshmallow. Oh, yeah. Okay, we've just invented something here. Let's revisit this. All right, so maybe this episode and these recipes were a little bit of a flop. But here's the beauty of it. We're going to make it better going forward. Yeah, the inspiration is endless yes. with us. And boozy. <laughs> and boozy. <laughs> Just add some booze to it. And add some booze. And by the time you finish up. drinking it, you won't remember the problems you had making those marshmallows. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> oh, it's one of those mornings. Okay. Good. <laughs> I think we can stop this recording. I think we're done here. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) And now for the fine print. Remember, when you like, subscribe, review, or share this podcast, it helps more people find us. Thank you so much for listening. At least they tasted good.